Hey guys, welcome back to the New England Scrapper. Now, today, I've got a really interesting video for you guys. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I picked up this original Xbox and PS2. Now, I, <laughs> I used to have a PlayStation 2. Obviously, it was a long time after PlayStation 2s went out of, you know, popularity. But, it was given to me by a relative who didn't need it, so I played, you know, some racing game on it for a while. And, uh, I also had a friend back in elementary school. I went to a birthday party sleepover at his house, and he had an old original Xbox. Check this out. I haven't seen one of these since... Since that party, and that was years and years ago. So, I figured we'd do a cool little... Not really retro, but... I don't know what I'd use for the word for it, but... Yeah, you know. Just a fun little scrap out of some old consoles. Now, these things are pretty wrecked. But there's pretty much no value. I mean, they're missing part... Well, this one isn't that bad. I think it's missing a hard drive or something there, but... They're missing parts, there's pretty much no value to this except for scrap. I mean, if you look at this one here, it's missing stuff. So it's... They're scrap, they're garbage. <laughs> so, we'll see what's inside. I haven't scrapped a console out before. But, I'm going to start with the PlayStation 2 here. Now, I did undo the screws on the bottom here just to save you guys a little bit of time. So... Alright, what's the deal here? I may have to uh, just try to pry it out with a screwdriver. That may be what's going to have to happen. I'm not really sure how to take these apart, to be honest. Again, like I said, this is my first time scrapping on any sort of console. I haven't gotten them before. So, let's see here. Oh, my glove's caught. What's holding on? Something's holding. Can't figure it out. Um, there we go. I think I might have gotten it. Nope, maybe not. Man, what's holding on to that? I'm not actually sure. Anyways, got a bit of low grade, low grade ribbon wire, really not worth much, some places may not even buy it as low grade, got plastic recycling, more plastic recycling, which will just go to my local transfer station, I'll throw it in their electronics bin, and I'll let the uh, larger company that comes and picks up from them. To, uh, let them deal with it. So we've got a little bit of number two insulated wire, and we got a disk drive here. If I can get to the CD-ROM board, I'll try to get it out, but if it's going to take, you know, a long time, I'm, I'm not going to bother with it. So what it's looking like here is a couple of screws. <coughs> now you know the So it looks like we have a board in there, but I'm really not sure if that's even worth going for. I'm going to say it's probably not, so make sure the camera can see it. It's a board right in there. I'm going to throw this into a light iron, because it's probably not worth going for that board. Now, yeah, the PlayStation 5 there is just, uh, is it about it? I think it was about a year ago that it came out. But, you know, being a recycler now, and, you know, I, one of the big things that I do is I can't, you know, because I'm still fairly new to the business, you know, I'm planning on being, you know, in the business for quite a few years. So one thing that I need to do as a recycler and, you know, pick up commercially, things like that, and as, you know, I continue to grow, you know, one of the things I need to look at is what technology is coming out now. 
you know, not what technology, uh, am I scrapping now? What technology is coming out now? Because that's a really big thing, you know, that I like to stress to people. I've got a motor right there. Take the fins off if you want, make it, you know, look a little more motor-like. But, you know, one of the things that I, you know, stress and even have to remind myself of is I can't, you know, I can't plan, you know, my future, you know, with the, you know, in the business with what, you know, by what's, you know, what I'm bringing in now. That's the word I'm looking for. I need to plan, you know, on what's being created now, like what smartphones coming out, you know, like how are they building that? If I can somehow, you know, figure it out. You know, I need to know how valueless the new stuff is. Because if it's super, super valueless, then I'm going to have a lot of problems in the future. Just a ribbon wire there, and there's actually a game in here. I wonder if I can get it out. That'd be interesting. I'd like to know, <laughs> I'd like to know what game's in there. You can see there's a disc right in there. You know, i got to try to keep all this right in the, uh, right in the camera. i got to remember that. Anyways, I, uh, you know, I need to think about, you know, what technology is coming out now, because, you know, there's, look at, like, the Pentium stuff, you know, Pentium Pros, compared to, uh, oh, okay, let's see what game we got here, Rocket Power Beach Bandits, <laughs> I'd say the disc is pretty wrecked, but that's kind of funny. That's really interesting. Anyways, I'll, I'll toss that later. So, there's no CD-ROM board that I'm going to try to go for here. It's just not worth it, so, light iron. Anyways, you know, if you look at the amount of gold that, you know, you get out of a Pentium Pro or even just any ceramic CPU, 386, 486, you know, and just think about how much less there is in all the, you know, the pinless CPUs that they have and stuff like that, you know, I need to think about the future, you know, like, are they going to take gold out of e-waste completely? You know, are they going to try to find ways to minimize gold and other precious metal use? And if that's the case, you know, am I going to have to shift my business more to a, um, you know, more to a scrap metal sort of thing, or not focus as much on the end of life, which is what I'm doing currently, and, you know, think about working more and more with refurbishers and people that, you know, reuse e-waste. You know, I'm currently looking into finding, you know, a refurbisher for laptops and stuff that I could come across. Now, how am I supposed to take this thing off? I'm just going to try to rip it off, but there's, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is how I'm going <laughs> to... Do it. So we got a couple of aluminum heat sinks. They are extruded, but if I can't, you know, if I can't get them off, I can't get them off. Aluminum extrusion. The last time I checked, was very, very good price-wise. I really need to get this steel plate off. Thinking the only way to do that is going to be to remove this bottom piece of plastic and undo, and undo screws here, which is exactly what I had to do. <laughs> So, more plastic recycling. Oh, and I had a piece of launch over here. Anyways, am I going to have to, you know, focus more on refurbish, reuse, resell, stuff like that, compared to end of life, which is what I'm, like I said, what I'm doing, what I'm doing now. <clears throat> I mean, generally, I don't do scrap metal jobs. But if someone calls me up and says, hey, you know, I got a truck and trailer load of steel, you want to come get it, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pass it up, it's, especially if it's something that I can, you know, pick up, drive 15, 20 minutes and just bring right to the scrapyard, great deal. Anyways, this board here is just a power board, you know, transformer, aluminum capacitor, could go for this wire, which I'm going to, but it's probably not even worth bothering with. 
you know, it's so little. Anyways, these generally, again, depending on your buyer, usually go for around 20-something cents. That's what I've seen, you know, the different companies I call, but, again, it's different for everybody, so talk to your buyer, figure out, you know, what the best setup is for that. I mean, I generally sell mine to the scrapyard just because I'm far enough away from my buyer to where it doesn't really make sense to, uh, to bother, you know, hauling low-grade boards an hour away to my buyer. Now, this one here is going to be a real pain in the butt because I can't, you know, undrill it. So, what I'm going to have to do is, um, I'm going to do this off camera just because it's going to take forever and I don't want you guys to have to sit there and watch me undo a bunch of tiny little screws. So, that's the boards in there. You can't really see it. So, what I might do is I'll just save the board and put it in the next video just so you people can see, you know, what I actually got out of it. So, <clears throat> let's move on here to the, uh, to the, <laughs> to the original Xbox. As far, as far as I know, it's the original it looks like the original. So, we've got torque screws under here. Yay. So I should have a Torx bit right. Um, where did I put it? I should have a bit holder around somewhere with Torx on it. Let me check my tool bag here. That might be the right Torx bit right there. So, yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's how I'm planning for the future. And if you, you know, if you want to get into doing e-waste recycling, I would, you know, I'd think about the same sort of thing. Anyways, I'll be making a scrap run probably tomorrow. Or tomorrow as of recording this video. Now this, I'm going to throw in light iron, even though there's a lot of plastic, it has steel on there, so, you know, I'll mix this in with some better, more clean steel, that's generally how I make, you know, how I do my steel mixes. There's definitely a lot of garbage, but, you know, I try to mix in some nicer, you know, I try to make the mixes pretty even. Now, okay, so there's some plastic recycling are going to be able to get the board out of this which is nice considering the other one was a lot of work and I didn't even have a board to show you guys at the end so more plastic recycling and oh, okay so we got a nice aluminum extrusion heat sink here these things are awesome like these I had a small kitty litter bucket and I think it was about a month ago I sold it and I got like it was either 10 or 20 bucks, but it, it wasn't even full. So I was like super happy with the money I'd gotten for it. <laughs> the prices for aluminum extrusion are insane. Oh, and they're all Torx. And I have the wrong size bit. Nice. So yeah, anytime you can get extrusion, save it. If you ha and I actually heard this one case from someone. I think it was someone who was telling Tom from iScrap app, you know, like scrap stories or something like that. And I guess the yard that this guy went to, they tried to give him like one rate for all like all grades of aluminum, which is probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like any scrap yard that tries that, pack up your stuff and go home. And, you know, I mean, I have heard of cases where someone had, like, a lot, you know, like, a huge mix of extrusion and cast and stuff like that, and some of the higher grades of aluminum. And what the scrapyard did was they gave, you know, this is really weird, it's like not, not sticking in there very well. That's really weird. Shouldn't it, like, push in? Oh, there we go. 
anyways, I heard of a case where, uh, you know, a scrapyard did that, but that was, you know, to save the guy time. You know, he was given a fair, you know, fair rate. I think my, my scrapyard would probably do the same. They're awesome. You know, hopefully at some point when I get a GoPro, <laughs> when I have some extra money to spend on one, I'll, uh, you know, I'll talk to them and see if I can do, you know, some unloading videos, stuff like that. Because I think that would be, you know, kind of like what E-Waste Ben does, or Shark Scrapper, or I'm trying to think of something. Uh, Scrap and Pallet Man, you know, they go out, do their stuff, and do videos unloading scrap at the scrapyard. And, you know, for anyone new to scrapping, I think that would be, you know, I, I really think that would be good to, you know, showcase. You know, that way you can kind of know what to expect when you go. You know, of course every scrapyard's different, but what can you do? You know, I mean, most of them have the same general layout, same general sort of weigh-in, you know, weigh out, show you your ticket, look at it, and if they're a good scrapyard, they'll let you, they'll let you look at it before you get, you know, paid out, which is what mine does, and you know, on Ferris, you sell them, they, uh, they hand you a ticket, and you, you know, check it over, and you can talk to the people, anyways, so this is what we have for a you know, motherboard, control board, you have a lot of tantalum capacitors, which I'm going to pinch because I do that. You know, eventually I'll sell them to someone. Now, I'm going to grade this as like a laptop motherboard. Again, it could be classed as a mid-grade, depending on your yard, but I... N or yard or board buyer. Mine, I'm pretty sure, I'll talk to them, but I'm pretty sure they would class this as a laptop because, you know, you have the same kind of ports... Same kind of junk to good chip ratio. So, I will put that in with my laptop motherboards. Again, talk to your buyer. They may feel a little differently. Now, last that we have in here is one board that I'm going to class as a mid-grade. Even though, again, some may class it as low, but it's got a chip, it's got a crystal. That's enough for my board buyer to call it a mid-grade. Again, very small. So, what have you class it as? You know, I mean, again, you really need to talk to them and find out, you know, how your buyer wants, wants their, you know, boards. Now this here, you know, low grade, it's mid grade if you go in and, now under here there's those little ferrite things. So, yeah, you might as well just throw that kind of thing in the low grade. And, you know, let's clean up a little more wire. Same deal. And scrap steel. Finish it off. So, <clears throat> yeah. That was a quick little... Quick little scrap I figured, you know, people would enjoy. You know, anyone who may use that kind of thing, you know. It's, you know, it brings, brings back memories. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.